Oi, you know what time it is. You're tuned in listening to the Dry That Aussie Metal Guy. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of his content when it drops. And remember, stay brutal, you mad dogs. Roof. G'day, how are you all going? It's Jai, that Aussie metal guy here with Crank.com. And today, tonight, wherever you are in the world, it is great pleasure that I'm getting to have a chat with Joanna from Lucifer, who are due to release their fifth album, Lucifer B. There we go. Um, absolute ripper of an album. Does come out January 26th through Nuclear Blast Records. Thank you so very much for joining me, my friend. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Uh, absolute pleasure. It um, must be great to get this album out. Can you tell me a little bit about when you kind of started working on it following the last album? Yeah, we pretty much, as soon as an album is out and we do all this um, interview, blah, blah, you know. Which... <laughs> all this. <laughs> yeah, all the PR work. Um, we start uh, working on stuff immediately, kind of um, here and there. I mean, we're very busy because we are a DIY band, which means we do everything ourselves. Um, I manage the band. We do all the graphic stuff, all the logistics. Um, uh, Nick, uh, my husband, who's the drummer in Lucifer, he has other bands as well, the Helicopters, and to, you know, stuff that keeps him busy. So um, uh, we are not, there's never a block of time that is reserved for one album. We kind of work here and there. And and uh, so it's really hard to pinpoint, you know, how, how long we took to record the album because we have our own studio as well, which is just outside my window here. And um, so we don't record everything in one block of time. We just kind of go in when we have time in between playing shows or, you know, when the schedule allows it. Yeah, well, this... But yeah. Yeah, this album, Sorry. I've been really, really enjoying the singles that have come off of it, and I've actually had a chance to listen to the album over the weekend, and it, it's an absolutely amazing album. Like, I've come across you guys probably about a year and a half, two years ago, and really loved your, your one through four albums. But this one here, it has to be some of the best material I think he's a wrote, and you know, I know a lot of people have been saying that as well. What are some of the themes and kind of influences that you went to for this album? Thank you, first of all, very much for your kind words. Um, yeah, that's it's funny, um, because you're not really supposed to favor any of your children, right? And we are very proud and fond of all the Lucifer albums, but somehow this one seems to strike a chord, uh, more so. And even with myself, and I don't know what it is, maybe it's that this time around we didn't have the time to mix it ourselves. So we had another friend who has a studio mix it. Um, he did a fantastic job and actually made us doubt um, our own abilities. <laughs> so, so we might not go back to doing it ourselves, you know, but um, he did a great job. And other than that, you know, the influences are the same. Uh, we love, you know, um, old school hard rock and heavy metal and, you know, like it's a lot of 60s and 70s stuff that we listen to, you know, it's old, old bands that um, kind of go into the filter of Lucifer, you know, may it be like, I don't know, new wave of British heavy metal, you know, very classic old school doom, old soul from the 60s, even, you know, 70s hard rock. And we take all that in and then we barf it out. And there you have Lucifer 5, the new album. <laughs> that's what I really do love about bands like bands especially your band Lucifer that does really draw on those old school influences that new wave of heavy metal and that really great sound of the proto rock and the doom and pushes it forward as well and it kind of irks me when people go oh rock is dead or and bands like yourself are just absolutely killing it with over 200 bloody live shows and that many rave um reviews from you guys it must be great for yourself to kind of have that but also to kind of hear the feedback from people kind of and that would push you forward as well wouldn't it yeah, I guess, but you know, because we we kind of live out here in the wild in um in Sweden, so we don't see so many people. So yeah. then, so we kind of like work away on our stuff, you know, in our little bubble. And then last month, no, in November, we went to the states uh, for a tour. And then you come out from the backstage onto stage, and then you see all these blokes, you know, in the first few rows, like singing those words back to you, and it's like. 
wow, how did this happen? You know, it's like I was just sitting at my desk, you know, looking out uh, onto the Baltic Sea. There's only like the occasional deer walking by, you know. Uh, <laughs> and and you kind of forget the outside world, you know, and the people that actually listen to the album. And then you go out and you play and then all of a sudden you, you know, you have it in front of you and then the mind clicks, you know, holy shit, you know, <laughs> that's, that's really cool. Uh, well, of course, that's what you were saying. Like you essentially sit in your own bubble creating music sometimes, and then it must be a very trepidatious time when you're releasing an album. Is like, how is everyone going to take this, and how is everyone going to receive it? And then to hear, like, especially about this album. Well, the trick is a little bit um, that we don't really think about it so much. Yep. It's it's like when we uh, approach an album, it's never, um, oh, we have to make it so to please, like. That all doesn't matter. Yeah. It's it has to feel right for us, and we have to be happy with it, and um, that seems to work the best. Instead of you know, I, I think there might be bands that try to do stuff to be like mainstreamy or whatever. That never can last long. That can that can't like work as a as a formula for success. Usually. Um, Especially, you know, people in the hard rock and metal community have a bullshit detector. So <laughs> they they will know if you're not sincere, you know. Yeah. So yeah. So we, we never really have that thought, you know, um hope people like it. But then when it happens that the album is out and you do get the feedback, you know, from people like you, then it's like, wow, that's really cool. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. No, I was loving, I was cranking um the, the earlier singles and um a fair bit of this back. Um like bands like In Flames and then I was cranking Lucifer, just, just the sound and style of you guys. And I was listening to a fair bit of the singles when I was going through chemo and everything as well. It just had a really great vibe to it as well. So I was really excited to to kind of listen to this whole album. But how how did you kind of pick which track you wanted to go off with the first single? Because this whole album, you could pick any one of these, I think, and it would have been equally as impactful. Wow, thank you. What can I say? Keep talking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I think we um we picked a song which we thought was more of a driven like hard rock number. So um it was uh, Coffin has That's no nice silver lining, which has like the opening riff is <laughs> more of a like a Judas Priest rocker, you know, and I think that should get people going as a first impression, hopefully, you know. But then you kind of want to show a little bit of variety. So that's why, you know, the songs afterwards are all like a little bit different. You have like one ballad, you have one that's a little bit more doom. Uh, so you have a little, a little bit of a teaser of everything. Yeah, well, I was um, equally loving the the film clips as well, but the, the latest one, Maculate Heart, tell us a little bit about that track and the really cool film clip you did with the cuts of the live footage as well. It was nice to add that in there as something a little bit different as well. People can kind of see a little bit of your performances there. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that uh, live footage was actually shot. Um, we were supporting Ghost uh, on a French arena tour. <laughs> It was our first arena tour, and um, I thought, well, you know, if we do something like that, we have to capture that and we use it for the video. Um, but the song, it's funny. Um, usually I write all the lyrics for Lucifer, and it's the first song uh, where I hadn't uh, done anything uh, in it. The whole song was completely written by Nicke, our, our drummer, and my husband, and... Um, I just, when I read his lyrics, he was like, no, you have to write your own. And I'm like, for this song, um, I will make the exception. <laughs> it's good. It's good as it is. And that's the great thing, you know, within our band, we don't have like these like ego problems amongst each other. It's not a competition. It's whatever is better for a song, it's going to be taken for the song. Yeah, definitely. So so how does that work with Nicker and the, the helicopters and the, the touring schedule? He must be so busy because you like, have a ton of shows coming up. I think it's the Satanic Panic Tour right through Europe, bouncing back and forth from Germany and Sweden and all over the place. He must be a busy man, yeah? Yeah, well, luckily, <laughs> he's not sure <laughs> the helicopters. So they kind of, you know, keep it kind of like to... 
uh, short bursts of like really short tours or or uh, festivals and stuff. So luckily he has the time to do that, but um, he can never go away for too long because he has a son that's quite young. And um, for example, in Europe, he will only do half the tour. Yeah, We will have another drama for one half of, of the tour. So, but it's it's good because I need to stay flexible with Lucifer, you know, and um, because Nika has so many projects. Yeah. And it must be good to kind of get back home to, to Stockholm. Now you're based there and kind of, as you said, kind of get back and kind of have that time away after the hectic touring schedule that you guys have. Yeah, totally. It's a cool, it's a good balance to get back home to nature yep. yeah. away from and stuff. Yeah, totally. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about your songwriting process for this album? Kind of how did you create these tracks? Uh, we kind of always work the same way. I mean, most of the songs, um, there is exceptions, but most of the songs are written between uh, Nick and I. There's two songs on the album that were written between our guitar player Linus and I, A Strange Sister and Riding Reaper. Um, the rest was between Nick and me. And yeah, Macula Tart, he completed it. Um, <clears throat> the rest of the songs, we kind of, we say, okay, now we want like a hard rock number. He sits down, writes, takes the guitar out, you know, and uh, write something, gives me a demo. Um, I go to another room, put it into garage band, super simple. And um, I start recording vocals and write lyrics for it. And then um, then we have a demo. And then usually we go, you know, uh, we, we take this whole thing and we uh, um, is, like reassess it. Does it have to be rearranged? Do we take out parts? Do we add parts? Um, so then the arrangement comes into play. And then once the demo is done, we put it to the side next song, you know, or sometimes we simultaneously work on different songs. Um, and then once you have enough stuff to have a good round album with a lot, lot of, with like all the different ingredients that make up a Lucifer record, then we know, okay, now we can go to the studio and record the album. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so some of those guitar riffs in this and the rhythms and the melodies are just absolutely unreal with these guys. It must be kind of fun creating music, not only with your husband there, but with Linus and Martin and Harold there on bass, because those guys have a, a, an amazing sound when you actually dig into it and listen to that as well with your vocals, like your vocal delivery is unreal. It must be fun just kind of getting in there and creating music all together. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. I love the guys. Uh, we, you know, with all the tours and going through thick and thin together, uh, we became like great friends. You know, we have, a, we have a ball together going on tour. It's a band that is very unrock and roll in the sense of there's no drama. <laughs> so we, we just enjoy hanging out together on tour, you know, so it's really cool. Uh, and, you know, we kind of have all have the same, um taste in music and in things movies and stuff so yeah it's just we just have a blast hanging out well that's another thing like i watch in like so a lot of your film clips and i can see the am i wrong correct me if i'm wrong you yeah, inspired a little bit by the old cinema and especially like i was watching um night of the living dead that's what i was thinking of with some of your film clips um especially for the latest stuff the black and white vibe and the cemetery tell us a little bit about that yeah totally we love old school horror movies you know and uh, we love zombies and um yeah <laughs> for a slow dance and a crypt and at the mortuary we did basically a short film right part one and two kind of and my idea was, well, I was sitting, one day I was sitting next to Nick in the car and I was thinking about zombies and I said to him, but what if, you know, the zombie that's chasing you isn't really trying to harm you? Maybe it's your ex-lover who just wants to be reunited with you. Like, hey, Johanna, wait, <laughs> you know, wait, it's me. Hey, it's me, don't you remember me? You know, <laughs> and then, and then I go, oh. Oh my God, it's you, you know, oh, you know, I have my guy back. Um, so Nick thought that's ridiculous and totally retarded. Uh, but, um, oh, you're not supposed to say that anymore today. Sorry. Uh, that was kind of, um, though, um, loosely, like, wasn't Night of the Living Dead kind of that premise as well, yeah. where his girlfriend became a zombie and she still wanted to be I guess. kind yes, of. Yes, I also could also be that. But, um, yeah, so... Um, 
and also i think humor is so important and of course these videos are silly you know but not only there's some seriousness in it too but i think it's very important when you deal with uh, dark subjects in music that you put a certain amount of humor in it so that it, um, otherwise you become a joke you know if you take yourself too serious and you're like too like um it's stupid and it's not very rock and roll to be too serious so. No, no, it definitely is not rock and roll to be too serious. You did mention Riding Reaper. Tell us a little bit about that track because I did have that one highlighted here. That was a killer track. That one I do want to talk about the last track as well, Nothing Left to Lose But My Life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So so Riding Reaper um, is – Nick and I, we have a small record company, a small label called Riding Reaper. Um, and I thought, okay, if we have that, I also would like to have a song called that. Um, and since all the songs I write are about death, kind of <laughs> more or less, um, we didn't have one uh, about the writing reaper yet. So, yes. Um, and it became a really driven song. Linus um, wrote the guitar riffs and stuff. Uh, and we thought it's, you know, catchy enough to open the album with. I actually wanted it to be a single, but then we went for other stuff. Um, it was hard to decide. Uh, nothing left to lose but my life uh, is my own personal thematic killed by death <laughs> because, uh, you know, I love a little bit of humor, like I said, uh, and um, I think it's important to put that into the titles also. Uh, of course, it's a little bit ironic, um, but it's also not because it's imagining, you know, leaving uh, leaving and dying and going away and that's my goodbye song so it's it lent itself to be the last song on the album yeah no i absolutely really um connected with that and you do got to look at death sometimes with a bit of humor i um, went through last year just i had multiple rounds of chemo radiotherapy two major um, surgeries as well recently found out two weeks ago i'm cancer free but listening to albums like this um you know it's it's kind of it's good to talk about death too and have that prevalence and to be able to sing about it and embrace it as well because it is a natural part of life and what we go through you know what I mean there is a beginning and there is an end well first of all I'm very glad to hear for you that that you made it that you're cancer free I'm happy for you that's awesome um yeah you know I think um because for me um, I have lost quite a few people in my life also to cancer to various things suicide as well um that um crushed me really and i think to to cope with it it's always good to try to look you know the bull into the eyes and and try to understand it and even make fun of it you know and write silly lyrics about it and stuff. all that helps to to deal with it it's like therapy to me to write lyrics I have therapy. I'm my own therapist. <laughs> exactly. Then not to not totally dwell on it, and then to use those losses as a positive as well, and to create something out of it. Um, that's something I've always done in my life as well. I did mention you played over 200 shows in Europe, Japan, North and South America. Um, is there anywhere you haven't played that you're really keen to kind of get along and play sometime in the future? Australia, of course. I mean, yeah, I that hello. <laughs> <laughs> Promoters of Australia, it is I, Lucifer. Please book us. <laughs> yes, definitely. We would definitely love to have you down. And uh, look, and the first album with Nuclear Blast as well. What's it been like signing with Nuclear Blast as a label and working with them for this one? Let's see how they're doing on this album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got, I got to mention the vinyl as well. The vinyls are it's looking absolutely sick. I've seen that. Um, you're showing that out on the. the here we go. Okay, so it's me in a coffin, and it's also everybody oh, yeah. else in a coffin. The thing is, you know, I think nowadays, um, people a lot of people don't buy vinyl, but um. It's a little bit of a shame because we put a lot of like detail and effort into the design and it's not just the cover. There's like an inlay, you know, with like a lyric sheet and the photos and everything is very, because we do all that ourselves, um, we put a lot of love and passion into it. So um, I would recommend buying a Lucifer album. Um, 
Fallen Angels of Australia. <laughs> Get your hands on it. It looks great. Exactly. I no. love vinyl. I went back um, when that COVID was happening. I actually went and got a little record player and um, started hooking mm. up some vinyl, um, hitting the record stores. And because I couldn't go to any gigs, so it was like, oh, what can I do? And started building up a nice little record collection and a tape collection as well. I'm loving these old school media your forms that are coming back you know the tape cassettes and the vinyl i'm, I'm kind of glad being a metalhead that we actually still as you said it's not as popular but we actually still go buy merch and things like that as well exactly we have cassette tapes too i've seen that I as think. well that's why i mentioned it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's done. back to the roots <laughs> yeah, back to the absolute roots hey look um we we're talking about favorite children there and it's um hard to pick out one but if you had to pick out a favorite track that you're really digging this week off of the latest album which one would it be and why it would be at the mortuary and it's because it's very morbid and it has all the different ingredients that make up a Lucifer song um, all combined. You know, it has the eeriness, it has the hopeful, driven hard rock part that immediate, immediately uh, crushes all your hopes by a doom part coming in and uh, <laughs> giving you the, the fist of doom, you know. And um, yeah, it's kind of, <laughs> it just, I'm sorry, I'm retarded, I'm stupid. Um, but uh, it has everything. I just love the song. It touches me and, yeah, I think it's great. And that's probably it's one of the things I'd like about Lucifer as well, that that punch of doom and proto-rock and old-school heavy metal all in bloody wrapped in a package of Lucifer. So um, you still have a funeral service for the um, launch of the album as well, don't you? That's right, yes. We have actually ordered a coffin for the funeral service, uh, as oh, you do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and I uh, I ordered uh, communion communion waivers to you know give to people and like um, grave lights and stuff like that with Jesus on it. Um, yeah, I think you know all these things are important and make up uh, the world of Lucifer. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the party. We have uh, actually because um, your show is called Crank, right? Yes. Yeah, I well, noticed have... there's Crank on there as well. It's actually co-run by a guy from Sweden as well. So when I'd seen just moved over that way, I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. That's... All right, cool, yeah. So there you go. Yeah, we have um, – because the zombie in the videos, that is Erik, uh, who is his, – his stage name is Tyrant. He's from a band called Niflheim and Crank. And he's going to DJ – at the record release party together with Erik from Vatain. So it's going to be a blast. Awesome. I love the name. I'm going to be going out and checking that straight after this interview. Joanna, this has been an absolute pleasure. Everybody go out, grab loose for V. It does come out January 26th through Nuclear Blast Records. Do you have any last words, shout outs, thank yous or anything else you'd like to add in there, mate? Um, thank you. Um, well, I just hope that we get to see the two fans that we have in Australia in person soon. Um, <laughs> if you want to stay up to date with Lucifer, go to uh, Lucifer.church and um, uh, get yourself the newsletter, which I write. So thank That's you it. so much for having me. That's it. Get some Lucifer into the stereo, crank it up really bloody loud. The neighbors are going to want to hear it. Cheers, Joanna. Yes, thank you so much. All Pleasure. Right, thank you. Oi, you're tuned in to Dry That Aussie Metal Guy, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of his sick content. And remember, stay brutal, you legend.